celebrating 10 years of delivering the news and content automotive professionals can count on. CVTnews.com. Subscribe today. Welcome to CBT News with Bridget Fitzpatrick. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to CBT News. I'm Jim Fitzpatrick sitting in for Bridget. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Coming up on Inside Automotive, I sit down with Patrick Condren, who's the product marketing lead for IT solutions at CDK Global. But first, here are today's top stories. Stellantis released its third quarter results yesterday, reporting revenues of $41.2 billion, an increase of 29% year over year. The automaker shipped 1.3 million vehicles globally, and there were 926 thousand vehicles in its new vehicle inventory at the end of September. Sales of the company's battery electric vehicles totaled 68,000 units, a 41% increase year over year. The company confirmed its full year guidance for 2022, expecting another year of double digit margin results and a positive cash flow. Ford Motor Company says sales declined 10% during the month of October as the automaker struggled with supply chain issues that have delayed shipments to dealers. Ford reported sales of 158,327 new vehicles last month, down nearly 176,000 from the same month a year earlier. These results mark the second straight month of declines. Ford had roughly 40,000 vehicles at the end of the third quarter and expects to complete and ship those vehicles by the end of the year. Swedish EV maker Polestar has obtained $1.6 billion in financing support from major shareholders, according to a press release from the company. Volvo Cars will provide $800 million in U.S. dollars as an 18-month term loan. This loan amount is comparable to the financial and liquidity support provided by PSD Investment, Polestar's other significant shareholder. Polestar says it currently has around 70,000 cars on the road today and is on track to reach its goal of delivering 50,000 cars to customers in 2022. Fisker released its third quarter financial results on Thursday. The company reported cash and cash equivalents of $824 million at the end of Q3, a net loss totaling $149 million and a 0.49 cent loss per share. The company also affirmed that it was on track to begin production on the upcoming ocean in November. Fisker anticipates producing 42,400 units through the end of 2023. Don't go anywhere. Coming up on Inside Automotive, I sit down with Patrick Condren with CDK Global. We'll be right back. Celebrating 10 years of delivering the news and content automotive professionals can count on. CVTnews.com. Subscribe today. CDK Global recently published its annual State of Cybersecurity Report, which highlights top security concerns in preparation for the FTC safeguards rule deadline. Today on Inside Automotive, I sit down with Patrick Condren, who's the product marketing lead for IT solutions with CDK Global to discuss the report's findings. Check it out. You know, we've read in CDK's report that cyber attacks are on the rise. I've got some friends of mine that own dealerships that happened to them. What are the main factors causing this increase? Yeah, those those main factors are ransomware and phishing attacks. Those Mm. have really increased over the past couple of years, affecting pretty much all industries. Dealers specifically, you know, as you may know, hold a massive amount of financial and customer data. Yeah. Yeah. So they are a treasure trove for hackers and with rapidly changing technology that dealers have to keep up with in a mobile world, uh, this can frequently lead to outdated network infrastructure for the dealer. So it kind of creates a perfect storm for security breaches. Um, I kind of always think about this scenario. Would you drink expired milk? No, you (laughs) wouldn't. So then why would you use out of date software, technology or cybersecurity solutions? That's right. Dealers really need to have a solid cybersecurity plan in place um, and keep their IT infrastructure operating uh, safely and efficiently. 
That's right. And if you do drink outdated milk, you can only get sick for a day or so. But if you don't pay attention to your cybersecurity in your dealer group or your dealership, you're in major trouble, right? You will be sick for a very long period of time because you might lose your company. But uh, what is the impact on dealerships uh, if a cyber uh, incident happens? Well, the average ransomware payout, and that's a really good question, Q2 uh, of this year was 228000 so that's an 8% increase from Q1, but right. it kind of goes a little bit past the monetary impact. Because if you think about the consumers and their trust with dealers, yeah, 84% of customers said they would not go back to buy another vehicle if there was a data breach at that specific dealership. That's so right. um, then you start talking about dealers with multiple rooftops um, and they're especially vulnerable because once they get breached, then all their rooftops are in trouble. So it's it's more important now than ever for dealerships to have the necessary security measures in place, such as like incident response steps. Um, and more importantly, a dealership leader who takes charge and implements a layered security approach to avoid a cyber attack. Yeah, for sure. And, and you're right, if in the event that something does happen at one dealership or for the dealership group, man, it taints that brand in in that market with those consumers in a very big way. I mean, we all know that, you know, when something happened with Target, everyone said, whoa, I don't know if I want to go back there right now with my credit card, certainly during the holidays or what have you, because uh, unless this, this is corrected, you're, you're in there with them, right? And that's a scary Absolutely. situation. What are the best steps that they can take to mitigate an attack? So in our in our report, we saw a huge upswing in, in dealerships taking cybersecurity uh, seriously uh, through antivirus and malware protection. So uh, we saw this year that dealers increased 31% year over year uh, to our last year study. But both those tactics really aren't good anymore. Uh, they should dealers should have real time monitoring uh, as well. So nearly 60% of the dealers plan their plan to prioritize and upgrade their investments in IT infrastructure this year. Be sure to watch that interview in its entirety right here at cbtnews.com. Well, that's a wrap for our show today, but we invite you to join us right back here tomorrow morning for all of the latest news and trends impacting the retail automotive industry. Follow us on TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Jim Fitzpatrick sitting in for Bridget. Thank you so much for watching today. Go out and make it a great day. CBT News, your number one resource for auto industry news and content. Celebrating 10 years of delivering the news and content automotive professionals can count on. CBTNews.com. Subscribe today.